thank you everyone for coming. My name is Dr. Fly on the Wall. Before we review the group rules, can we quickly go around and introduce ourselves, starting with the student to my right? My name is Mahatma. My name is Prankster. My name is Maria. My name is Rudy. My name is Socrates. My name is Brigitte. My name is Sleek. My name is Latoya. My name is Martha. My name is Kyoto. Here are the group rules. Acceptance. We all have different issues and problems and will accept each other irrespective of different social status, height, shape, sexual orientation, color, or creed. Sharing. To share your feelings. If you feel your painful experience will help others, simply say, I pass. If you are not ready to share your feelings and opinions. Installation of hope. Encouragement that recovery is possible. One at a time. Respect one another by not carrying on another conversation when it is their turn to speak. Imparting information. Teaching about problem and recovery. Confidentiality. What happens in group stays in group. Do not form cliques or use the group as a dating venue. Cohesion. Encourage and cheer on one another. Empathy. Show understanding when other group members are crying. Imitative behavior. No cussing or yelling or rudeness. Yalom's therapeutic group factors. Universality. Feeling of having problems similar to others, not alone. Altruism. Helping and supporting others. Installation of hope. Encouragement that recovery is possible. Guidance. Nurturing support and assistance. Imparting information. Teaching about problem and recovery. Developing social skills. Learning new ways to talk about feelings, observations, and concerns. Interpersonal learning. Finding out about themselves and others from the group. Cohesion. Feeling of belonging to the group. Valuing the group. Catharsis. Release of emotional tension. Existential factors. Life and death are realities. Imitative behavior. Modeling another's manners and recovery skills. Corrective recapitulation of family of origin issues. Identifying and changing the dysfunctional patterns or roles one played in primary family. Now, can we go around and say how our week has been since our session a week ago? And remember one important group rule. Simply say, I pass if you are not ready to share your feelings and opinions. Who wants to go first? Me, me, let me go first. The last time we let you go first, you did not wait around to hear what others had to say. It's my anxiety. I promise to wait and hear what others had to say. Sometimes I get anxious too, but then I say to myself, all of you guys here are so nice and helpful, I have nothing to be afraid of. Well said, Maria. That's an example of altruism and universality. It is good to know that you are not alone, that your world is not the worst world, that joy, pain, and suffering are universal. Can I say how my week was now? <laughs> Wait a minute, Brigida. Let us first find out why Latoya is crying. What's the matter, dear? Why are you crying? It's my daughter, Trina. She's chosen her lazy, unemployed husband over me, after everything I've done for her. Crying in catharsis without corrective action is a wasted emotional experience. Now that we've empathized and encouraged one another, let us look at the origins of Latoya's anger. We are unfortunately aware of 100% of all our emotions, which are generated by the millions of thoughts that course through our worried minds. How can we teach LaToya to track her thought and discover the hidden belief systems that generate them? By connecting people's behavior with what they actually say. So, you think what you say is a reflection of your thoughts? Maybe we need to ask LaToya why she believes her daughter Trina should choose her over her husband. So you think her belief system is what is generating her thoughts? Children these days have no gratitude or respect for elders. I have the same problem with my eight-year-old son, Diego. He makes me so angry that I just want to smack him until I figured him out. So, we all agree that beliefs control our thoughts, which in turn controls our emotions, which in turn controls our behaviors and actions. 
Teenage rebellion is extremely common and is experienced in virtually every home and school setting. The difficulties of setting boundaries with rebellious teens is played out in the following animated audiovisual presentation with voice animations. Commentaries by a doctorate level behavioral psychologist are added after each scene. Enjoy! I hate school and I freaking hate everyone in this house! You're a bad kid, just like your useless dad. You're a useless kid! It is very common for parents to feel helpless. This is a truly difficult and very frustrating situation, but Maria has some options. Ignore Diego until both of you are calm. Seek professional counseling whenever feasible. Involve the cops if drugs and violence are involved, or if Diego is completely out of control. A court-ordered detention home with mandatory individual and family therapy. Pray. Some parents have derived comfort from prayers. Set boundaries with Diego. The scenes that follow illustrates the difficulties encountered while setting boundaries and how to deal with them. I want to talk about the new rules and what happened last night. Leave me alone. I don't freaking care. Time out. Be patient until Diego is in a good mood and mom is reasonably calm. When you were rude to me in front of your siblings, I felt embarrassed and disrespected. I felt you did not love me or respect my feelings. Mom, you know I love you. I get mad when people yell at me. I'm sorry. I need you to be more respectful and considerate of my feelings as your parent. All right, Mom. Can I go now? Just one more thing. If you continue to be rude or oppositional, as your parent, I will explore all options available to me. I will do the following. Take away your Game Boy or iPhone. I will ground you for one week. I will call the cops if you become violent or use drugs. I will send you to juvie if you become unruly. Ah, darn, damn it. You're a bad kid. Ah. Scenes 1 to 3 covers the first three steps of the boundary technique. Boundary setting requires patience and sometimes several tries before you get it right. So wait till both Maria and Diego are calm again. Do not forget that you should use both positive and negative reinforcements, ranging from mild, moderate, severe. Have Diego come up with signed written list of consequences and reward. If you stop being rude and defiant, I will reward you with more sleepovers, a new Game Boy, more time with your friends, a new phone, and buy you your favorite toys. Really, Mom? You are the best mom in the world. I love you. I need you to help me do something. Anything, Mom. What is it? Help me come up with a list of punishments you think is fair if you keep cussing and swearing. 1. Remember to titrate your reward and punishment from mild, moderate, severe. 2. Remember to avoid addressing too many boundary issues at a time. Start with the easy ones and pace yourselves. 3. Remember boundary setting is a contract so both of you should sign. Put it by the fridge. 4. Sometimes setting boundaries requires privacy. Send the dog and the other kids to the other room. 5. If you are not ready to apply consequences, do not bother setting up boundary. 6. Be careful to consider your child's handicaps. Do not ask an ADHD child to sit still for one hour. 7. With a few modifications, most of these techniques can be applied to adults. General Information 7-Step Boundary Technique for Teenagers Remember, this requires patience, flexibility, and tolerance. Avoid name-calling. 1. Inform your teenager that you are about to set boundary for him or her. 2. If he says no, then be patient until he is in a good mood. 3. When you are rude, I feel embarrassed, disrespected, or guilty. I need you to be more respectful and considerate. 4. If you continue to be rude, I will explore all options available to me as your parent including mild, moderate, severe, Game Boy, grounding, cop, or DH. Have the kid come up with signed written consequence. 5. If you stop being rude, I will reward you with 
Mild reward. Moderate reward. Severe reward. Examples. More time with friends. A new game. A used car. 6. If you are not ready to apply consequences, do not bother setting up boundary. 7. Be careful to consider his, her handicaps. Do not ask an ADHD child to sit still. But that does not give Latoya the right to invade her daughter's privacy and run her life. Neither does that give my daughter Trina the right to be so ungrateful. All I ask is that she keep her house clean and spend more time with me, her mother, and now she won't even let me see my grandbabies. I told her I will sue for grandparents' rights. I told her to be quiet when she started complaining because I'm her mother. I've done nothing wrong and now she won't even speak to me or text me back. Then why is Trina so mad at you? Why are you guys quarreling? <laughs> Sprinkle Ace on all your quarrels. What is Ace? No, I know. We talked about Ace last week. A is attitude, C is communication, E is expectation. Correct. Are you willing to change your attitude towards your daughter Trina and find out why she is mad at you? No, she has to come to me first and apologize. I'm her mother. She has no right to be mad. After all I've sacrificed for her. <laughs> what about the ace? Expectations, expectations. What is the underlying belief system here? Latoya is angry because she believes that she knows what is good for the daughter and that her daughter owes her and should listen to her just as a kid would. In other words, she does not believe or see her 24-year-old daughter as a grown woman capable of making her own decisions and that Latoya, she is unable to detach herself and allow her daughter learn and grow from mistakes. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed in her. That's exactly what my mom says to me, that I'm a disappointment, and that drives me crazy. Would you believe to seat down with your daughter Trina and a counselor? No, I don't need no referee. When was the last time you spoke to your daughter? Two months ago? <laughs> Are you able to put yourself in Trina's shoes? What shoes? Remember how Maria controlled her anger and behavior by putting herself in eight-year-old son's shoes after the boy got under her skin? But Trina's a grown woman and should know better. What defense mechanism is preventing Latoya from gaining insight? Denial and projection of blame. What about Ace? Maybe Latoya should lower her expectations. I sincerely believe your relationship with your daughter will improve if you lower... We need to lower your blood pressure. No, I need to lower my expectations. <laughs>